paths. Initial preparation of exposed root surfaces includes thorough scaling and root planing, as well as odontoplasty to reduce any cervical prominences of roots that extend beyond the confines of the alveolar housing. Root preparation begins with ultrasonic scaling of the exposed root areas using a fine tip scaler. Care is taken not to traumatize the marginal gingiva. A rotary finishing burr is then used to initiate odontoplasties in order to reduce the profile of each exposed root surface, improving the chances for successful root coverage. The goal is also to make each root surface as smooth as possible. Root preparation is completed using manual root planing. The roots are then conditioned for three minutes with 24% buffered EDTA gel in order to eliminate the bacterial smear layer, any root surface toxins, and to expose collagen fibers. EDTA is burnished into the root surfaces to improve its root conditioning effectiveness. Sterile saline is then used to thoroughly rinse the EDTA gel from the surgical field. The VISTA technique calls for a vestibular access incision which in many maxillary procedures is optimally placed in the midline frenum. The midline incision in this case begins at the base of the papilla and is approximately 1.5 centimeters long. The incision is made through the periosteum in order to allow elevation of the subperiosteal tunnel. Beginning with a straight shanked Vista 1 periosteal elevator, a bilateral subperiosteal tunnel is prepared, extending just beyond the most distally treated teeth. To facilitate access to more distal areas of the tunnel, a Vista 2 elevator with a more curved shank is used. In order to avoid soft tissue perforation, the elevator must remain against bone at all times. The tunnel is extended beyond the mucogingival margin. Using the shorter Vista 3 and longer Vista 4 elevators with bayonet curves, the tunnel is elevated through the gingival sulci of the treated teeth to facilitate low tension coronal advancement. Vista 3 is used to elevate the marginal tissues closest to the access opening, and Vista 4 for elevation of more distal sites. The tunnel is extended interproximally under each papilla as far as the embrasure space will permit without perforating through the papilla. Papillary reflection extends to the papilla distal to the most distally treated tooth. While making no surface incisions, the entire mucoperiosteal complex of each papilla is elevated away from the underlying bone. At each treated tooth, a 6O polypropylene horizontal mattress suture on a C3 needle is placed approximately 2 to 3 millimeters apical to the gingival margin, spanning close to the width of the tooth. If possible, place the suture within the zone of the keratinized tissue. The suture is tied loosely so that the knot can be positioned at the mid-coronal area of each tooth. The facial enamel surface of each tooth is then etched for less than 5 seconds with acid etch and then thoroughly irrigated and dried. The gingival margin is then coronally advanced with minimal tension beyond the CEJ to the most coronal level possible of the interproximal papillae. The polypropylene sutures are then secured to the facial aspect of each tooth by placing a small amount of flowable light-cured composite over each suture knot, preventing apical migration of the gingival margin during early stages of healing. Without over-desiccating the tissues, teeth should be thoroughly dried prior to bonding in order to facilitate bonding of the sutures to each tooth. The extended suture ends are removed for the scalpel. A small amount of additional composite is placed over the sharp edges of the suture knot. The bonded sutures can be removed after three weeks, or at the discretion of the clinician. Over time, the gingival margin will reposition itself at the level of the CEJ. The depth of the vestibule is measured in this case measuring approximately 15 millimeters. The mucograph matrix is properly sized to occupy most of the space within the subperiosteal tunnel. Using a tissue forceps to position the mucograft through the subperiosteal tunnel, mucograft is first lightly wetted with sterile saline. Although in other procedures mucograft is positioned dry, lightly wetting the mucograft in the Vista tunneling technique facilitates smooth placement throughout the length of the tunnel. It is best to wet the mucograft immediately prior to placement inside the tunnel. Mucograft is next inserted through the midline access opening, the full length of the subperiosteal tunnel. The compact layer should face upwards and the spongiest surface should face toward bone. Mucograft should cover all portions of the exposed roots. Excessive pressure should be avoided as it may compress the matrix. 
After mucograft comes in contact with blood, there is approximately a one-minute window when its position can be adjusted. Beyond one minute, the consistency of mucograft changes and should no longer be manipulated. Following the placement of mucograft, the midline incision is approximated and sutured primarily with multiple 6-O polypropylene sutures.